Home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope. Oh, hey there. Hey there, YouTube world. What's up? Y'all want to talk about some real estate? Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%, that's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and today we're talking about a homer, an expat, Cleveland expat, right? My guy, T-Money, from the Cleveland area, right? Moved to Colorado wants to invest at home where he's from, right? And this is uh, cool. I was very excited to do this video for you, T-Money. I mean, I'm excited to do all the videos for you, but I really like this one uh, because some of the other stuff I've been sending you all in the Cleveland market, uh, but truth be told, it's like an hour away from where you grew up, right? You grew up in Cleveland Heights, which is way on the east side, right? So just so everybody's aware, uh, Cleveland, let's say Cleveland is here. Uh, T-Money about half hour east of Cleveland, and then I sent him some properties that are about a half hour west, right? Well, this one, dude, this one's in Cleveland Heights, right? So right in your old stomping grounds, uh, I think is really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to go over the, the market just like you're a brand new investor, though, right? Because I do not recall how long you've been gone, uh, things of that nature. So I want to just make sure I dot all my I's, cross all my T's, and I totally dig this triplex for you, dude. So let's check it out. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's gonna be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's gonna be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back, folks. Let's jump into the deal. Let's jump into the neighborhood, right? I like this area. This is Cleveland Heights, Ohio, okay? Now, uh, if you check out the ultimate guide to... Oh, oh, lost it. If you check out the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, which don't you worry, folks, there is a link to it under this here video. It's also on the tools and resources section of HoltonWise.com. You will see that I have graded every neighborhood in the greater Cleveland area on an A to F scale. A, high cost, low risk. F, low cost, high risk. Now, I have uh, graded Cleveland Heights as a B, but the guide, folks, the guide is something that, uh, it's a starting point, right? It's it's there to, to simplify things and give you guys a good starting point. It is by no means uh, like the end-all, be-all. Like That's the starting point of the due diligence process, and then you could go from there, right? And I bring that up because Cleveland Heights is a big old city, right? It's a big old city, right? Uh, but this part of Cleveland Heights happens to be uh, part of Cleveland Heights where you see higher prices, okay, higher rents, more demand, right? Why? Because we're by some banging stuff, dude. Coventry, right? Little Italy. University Circle, right? These are draws. People love this kind of stuff, right? So the closer you are to these little areas, the nicer, the more money you get in rent, the nicer the properties are the higher quality the tenant base is, right? So B is kind of like a catch-all, be-all, but there's parts of Cleveland Heights that honestly feel more like a C, and there's parts that feel closer to an A. Although I wouldn't 100% like label this as an A, but like as you start getting over here, you do get like wealthy people uh, that will own some like pretty cool like 100-year-old like old mansions, right? You get a lot of uh, like doctors and lawyers and stuff that work downtown uh, that like to live in this area, don't like take that to me and I'm telling you you're going to rent this uh, triplex to doctors because you probably won't. Although every once in a while you might get like a, like a, uh, right at the end there, resident. I don't know if it's a resident. It might be a resident. You know, them dudes like right at the end where they're not really making bank yet, right? I think you start, you're making like 60K. You're like finishing up like your fucking... 10, 11, 12 or something of medical school, however it is. But, like, you know, people, ha I've, like, heard people 
like on shows like this or turnkey providers be like, oh, you can rent your duplex to doctors. Like, don't think that I'm trying to tell you like, yeah, dude, some dude making 400K is going to rent your duplex apartment because he won't. But uh, it's a hopping area. It's a nice area, right? And the property I have for you in said nice area, nice little triplex, okay? 1616 Eddington Road, Cleveland Heights, 44118. Been on the market a while, though, dude, 85 days. And it's not because the neighborhood's not dope, because we just established that it is. But the property is priced a little too high. They got it at 249.9. I don't want to see you pay 249.9. I think the right price here for this bad boy, 230. 230. What are you going to get? Well, Right now, we got 110 at 975, one at 850 in a vacant unit. But long term, you'll get 975, 975, 750. So 2700 a month. 32400 scheduled to come in. And these are going to be high quality tenants, okay? Now, 32400 scheduled to come in for the year. You have fixed and variable expense estimates. I believe that should be around 16 and a half. Bringing your actual profit just under 16k for the year. You buy it at 230, with us paying 230 as far as the point of sale inspection. We want to push that off on the seller, get them to clear that off. Uh, like right here, you see, you see all this peeling paint. I'm sure that's on the POS, right? Uh, in the notes, like the broker notes, they said that's like notes that I could see as a broker. Uh, it's not public, but they said that the seller was working on the POS. So like things like that, I can almost guarantee. Uh, we're on there. So if we're going to pay 230 we want them to do the whole POS for us, right? And here's that vacant unit. It's a third floor unit, right? It's even got its own laundry. I like that they carried the subway tile like backsplash all the way through this wall. That really does make it look pretty banging, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't really look like he's going to need much of anything on the turn here, right? And that's what's nice. Like the nicer neighborhoods you get, uh, the less damage the tenants do when they move out, right? The other two units are already occupied, right? One at market, one a little under. But over time, we would get that up to market. You got some good-looking stuff on your big-ticket items. Your hot water tanks do seem new. Now, just so you know, that wrapping right there, don't freak out, but that's probably asbestos wrapping. Your uh, inspector, when they uh, actually do your inspection, they will cite that. And then sometimes we get people that freak out, right? Especially our California folks. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Asbestos! No! Oh, like, bro, settle down. This ain't California. This is Ohio, right? It's a red state. It's not the end of the world. They don't, like, take you outside and tar and feather you for owning a property with asbestos. Asbestos is actually not dangerous if you don't disturb it, right? So, like, if you got, like, an asbestos tile floor, okay, you can, like, just chill on it. It's cool. No issues. But then you take, like, a jackhammer to it and you start tearing it up and all the dust comes up, then that's a problem, right? So, uh, if you wanted to uh, take care of those asbestos-wrapped Ducks, what you really want to do is just encapsulate them, really just cover them up, right? You could box them in. Or you could have somebody come out and they, like, spray it all down to limit the dust, and then they, like, rewrap it with some stuff. It's really not that big a deal. I know folks uh, from some of the more regulated states that we work with, they freak the f out. They freak out on that shit. It's not really that big a deal. Relax. They've been there for over 100 years. All good, right? As long as uh, people are not, like, Going in there when everyone's in there just chilling, no mask, and like starting to tear crap out. That, that's when it becomes dangerous. That's when it becomes a problem. Uh, but solving that problem, removing them, or encapsulating them rather, not a big deal. It's not a deal killer. Don't freak out, right? So, all that said, 230 I believe, is what we should get, right? I think they're 20K overpriced, and I feel like eventually they're going to figure that out because they've been on the market for a while, right? So, you put down 57.5, get the bank to kick in 172.5. Folks, money is cheap right now. We are at historic. Rick Lowe's for financing, right? So get that 30-year money now. Get that money now while the money's cheap. Money, interest rates, they're going to go up eventually, right? So you only get 10 resi mortgages. Might as well do it on some really nice, high-quality real estate, okay? 172 and a half is your mortgage. That'll be... A 727 a month mortgage payment, your pure cash flow should average out to 1332, so less your mortgage, 605. That's a 13% cash on cash return, a seven cap, and of course your tenants, high quality tenants, will be paying off said 172 and some odd dollar mortgage. All told, this is a solid deal, very nice neighborhood. 
uh, will want the seller to do the POS, and I think this is going to be uh, something that's very, very nice, right? Like, it doesn't have the sexiest numbers in the world, uh, but when a lot of folks are investing in the Cleveland market, I feel like everybody tries to, like, clamor to the, the, the cheapest possible properties, and sometimes really good deals like this one get overlooked, and these are really good portfolio balancers. Uh, like, if you're going to buy 10 properties, right, because who's really coming out here to buy one property? Nobody, right? So say you want to get 10 properties, okay? All duplexes or triplexes or this or that. So say you end up with like, I don't know, 25 units. You don't want all of those 25 units to be like the highest risk, right? Like I make the most of my money on the lower income Section 8 stuff, right? That's where I've made my millies. But I balance that out, right? I have a robust, balanced uh, portfolio. It's like a balanced diet. Now, truth be told, my diet's not as balanced as it should be. I should probably uh, have less chicken wings, less hot sauce, and less blue cheese, and more like salad and broccoli, but that's neither here nor there. This is not a health show, uh, but as far as my portfolio goes, it's well balanced. I think you would be set up to well balance your portfolio, and this is a good portfolio balancer. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.